Today we are talking about the dropout report for the 2024-2025. Um, my name is Alexandra Cooks and I am the data quality trainer with the Maine Department of Education data team. And um, my role is to help you navigate Synergy and Neo. So I'm happy to do that with you whenever you need help. Um, so feel free to reach out to me, alexandra.cookson at maine.gov, or give me a call 207-446-3897 if we'd help. A quick little overview of what dropout reporting is. Um, so dropout reporting is for all students of compulsory age uh, or within compulsory grade levels. Uh, the definition of dropout is defined by the federal government as a student who was enrolled at some point during the federal reporting year, which is the previous school year from 10-1 to 9-30, uh, in this case, 2023 to 2024. So they would have had an enrollment last year in Synergy. Uh, and the student was expected to return by October 1st, 2024. And the student does not have an enrollment on 10-1-2024. So students will be counted as a dropout for each year that they meet the federal requirements. So if a student was a dropout last year, that does not mean that they can't be a dropout this year if they were enrolled at some point last year after the dropout window. Um, so just something to be aware of that you could have multiple uh, duplicates of students on these types of reports. Um, if they were a dropout last year, they could be on this year's report. Resources for today's reporting that we're talking about for dropout reporting, uh, the student data entry and reporting pay, uh, page on the MEDM support page, way down at the bottom, there are student reporting instructions and those student reporting instructions have a dropout reporting uh, report PDF. So you can find that there we are going to talk about it and i do have a link to it that i'll pop in the chat a little later on uh, for some of the scenarios that we're going to kind of run through so just be aware of that that if you do lose track of it it is available on the student data entry and reporting page please feel free to take advantage of that uh, resource so again the reporting range uh, for 24 uh, 23 24 actually is what it is um, so uh, 10 1 2023 to 9 30 2024 is the uh, federal reporting year uh, so that any student that had an enrollment during that time will be included in this report and uh, if they did not have an enrollment on 10 1. okay so this report opens uh, actually opens 10 2 uh, it will start to we'll start to look at 10 1 as the date uh, 10 2 will be when this report actually does open for you to see it. Uh, so it's not currently open. If you try to go to it right now for in NEO, we will not be able to get to it. Uh, so just be aware of that, that it's not there yet. Got to wait until 10 2 to get there. Uh, it will be due on 10 15 for, report, uh, for certification from your superintendent. So please just be aware of those dates. Data entry does happen from Synergy, so this is based on all of the enrollments that are in Synergy. Uh, so if any updates need to happen, they do need to happen in the Synergy system uh, for if an update for an exit code needs to be put in to remove a student from a dropout report, um, or if a student needs to be enrolled in order to remove them from a dropout report, then that is where you would find these students or find this. Um, you would do that in Synergy to be able to update that information. So any changes that you need to make in a NEO report, so if you see something that's incorrect on the NEO report for dropout, that change would need to be reflected in Synergy in order for it to be updated on the report. So enrollment dates, this is just something that I want to really hit on, hit on really hard. Uh, this is looking at the October 1 day. It's a little better this year. October 1st is a Tuesday this year. So we don't we probably won't see as much of this previously had it been on a weekend. Uh, so just something to be aware of, though, October 1st is the day that we are looking at for these students to be enrolled. If they don't have an enrollment on 10-1 or overlapping 10-1, then they are not going to be they're going to be on your dropout report. So there could be some backdating of start dates and things like that. Uh, so we can see there are a couple situations here that are outlining that a student starting on 9-5 that has an open enrollment just open through 10-1, uh, that student is going to be counted as fine. They're not going to be on the dropout report. If you have a student who enrolls on 9-5 and then leaves on 9-29, then that student will be considered a dropout if they don't have a start date on 10-1. Uh, so in this case, this student that we're looking at here um, in the second scenario, that student would be considered a dropout if that exit date was in, in, in 
was an exit date that was expected to return for this school year. And we'll get into that in just a moment on how that works. Uh, so the expected to returns. So if this student were in fact like transferred to another district or another SAU, this start date for the other SAU would have to be backdated to 10-1 in order for the student to not count as a dropout on the first report. If they start on 10-1, they should be all set and that start date will keep them off of your dropout report. So just kind of keep in mind, this is looking at students who are enrolled on 10-1, very similar to our um, October 1 report for enrollment. Uh, so just be aware of that. It's, it works in a very similar way, working, looking at just that date. So in terms of exit codes, there are a couple different ways that exit codes are used to translate into a dropout report. Um, so a exit code excluded from dropout reporting, these would be students that you, we would not expect them to be coming back. They would not have an enrollment on 10-1. So these are exit codes that would keep a student off of your exit report. So we have um, transferred to a different state, transferred outside the country, transferred to home instruction, graduated, died. Um, enrolled in post-secondary early childhood. So all of these ones are students that we would not expect them to be coming back into your school. Um, so if a student should have had this exit code uh, or should have had one of these exit codes on their exit from last school year, this is where you can add a one-day enrollment to update that exit code. So um, that student uh, would need, so you would need to add that information uh, 7 1 to 7 2, put in the new exit code, and that student would be excluded from the reporting. Sorry, question come in. I just I'm seeing that too. Um, I just want to, I'm going to pull up really quick my dropout reporting resource here. Let's make sure I'm on track. Yeah, I can uh, answer. Yeah, it is excluded. I'm seeing it. I just wanted to verify and cross-reference. So that is an exclusion from the uh, report. Go ahead, Mike, if you want to hit more on that one. Yeah, because um, the, the key here is that the 035, or sorry, 03509, um, and I don't want to trigger um, our Mr. Mitchell. Um, so the completed with a state recognized equivalency certificate, that's different than simply withdrawing so the key here is if they if they complete and get um, their adult ed you know GED high set if they get that before 10-1 then they are no longer a dropout but if their last exit is that they went to adult ed and if they haven't completed that program before the next reporting period then they will get they will get um, they will get logged as a dropout yeah. So unfortunately, what can happen is if, let's say, at the end of last school year, they went to adult ed on you know, June 5th and they don't complete that program until October 2nd, um, unfortunately, they will still be considered a dropout um, because they missed it by one day and it won't really uh, affect anything going after that. So that's how that's kind of set up. And it's the best we can do because we have to, you know, we have to pick a day um, or the feds had to pick a day. You know, we can't just keep kicking the can down the road. So 10-1 is the day and uh, we can't really keep looking can beyond I, that. Can so. more on that, can, some clarifying on that? Yeah. Is this within their four-year cohort? So we have a student who, who leaves our high school their sophomore year, for instance, and it takes them two years to get their adult ed um, high school equivalency mm -hmm. certificate. Does that count or are we talking if it's their senior year and they don't complete their high set before October 1st of the next year? Or is yeah. this not the spot for this conversation? And that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, this is um this is the fun of state and federal data reporting. So you you have let's say you have a kid, you know, 2 years ago that left in June to adult ed and then okay, we get to October 1. Uh, did they complete adult ed? Did they come back? No. Okay. So we, they get tracked as a dropout two years ago. And then, you know, we go through the whole next school year. Um, you know, they weren't enrolled in that school year. So they're not even on the dropout report that following year because we already logged them. 
and then we come, let's say, into the third year, and now they finally complete their high set, and then, you know, great, you know, you guys can go in and put in a one-day enrollment that they completed their high set, but they're, they already got tracked as a dropout, and there's nothing putting them on the new dropout report, and, you know, we don't, we're not going back, the feds aren't dealing with this whole situation of, you know, every school in the country going, oh, hey, uh, Johnny completed their adult ed, you know, two years after we reported the data. And, you know, people have been using that data for two years. Uh, you know, they they don't, it, it just, it's unfeasible to like fix it or correct it. So it's just, it is what it is. And, you know, they're so obviously the aware only, of that. Okay. So the only time, is, so it breaks yeah. the cohort piece. The four-year cohort has nothing to do with yeah. anything. We push that yeah, to the side. Either. The only way it can happen is if, just despite which of the four years of high school that they decide to exit for adult ed, um, if they complete it before the following October 1st, they're good to go. Otherwise, it hits the mark of being a dropout. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. This, okay, so, yeah, this you. is dropout, um, dropout and graduation have absolutely zero to do with each other. Completely separate collections. They don't care about what the other one's doing. Um, a kid can be a graduate and then a dropout. And then if they decide they want to come back, but then they quit again, they can be a dropout again. You know, they could be a dropout every single year of high school. <laughs> um, so it's it's just one of the ways of the data reporting. So, yeah. Great question, Sarah. Um, I also put in the resource in the chat that we are using that outlined the excluded from dropout reporting, uh, as well as the next slide that we're going to be going to. Um, so again, just to re-emphasize, if a student was meant to be exited with one of these codes uh, and was not at the end of the school year last year, uh, then a one-day enrollment will update that code and wait the hourly ETL, and it should be all set in NEO in, Neo in terms of uh, dropout reporting. There are also codes that do meet the definition of dropout. So if you have a student who was expected to return, uh, that, that would be any of these codes over here, um, 01907, 01908, um, all the way down here, those students are expected to return in the current school year and should have an enrollment on 10-1. Um, if they were exited during the 23-24 uh, school year and they did not, or up or any point from 7-1 up until 9-30, if those enroll enrollments do count as well. Again, the um, federal reporting year is 10-1 to, to 9-30, so just be aware of that. Um, if the student was not, or was exited with one of these codes and they do not have that 10-1 enrollment, they are considered a dropout. Uh, so this is where updating an exit code, so if this if a student were exited with not enrolled eligible to return but really you found out they transferred out of state over the summer this is where you would want to update it so that you get to that student who was excluded from the report so um if they were 03502 uh, they would be considered a dropout but um we'll get into some scenarios here in a second we'll look at an actual not an actual report but a mock report uh to go through some of those situations there are also codes that are expected to are not expected to return, but are also considered dropouts. So we have aged out, discontinued schooling, not enrolled, unknown status. This is where withdrew to adult ed and withdrew to the workforce. These are those dropouts as well, Sarah. I think this is where you were asking uh, that that's the difference between the completed with the high set and then the uh, in withdrew and enrolled to adult education. There's uh, the difference there. Great question. So locating the report in NEO, uh, you're going to have to log into NEO. So if you don't have an account with NEO or you don't have student data in your account, you will need to have an access record, access request su um, submitted on your behalf by your superintendent. Uh, and then we will process that and get you access. In order for you to have access, you do need to have an active staff assignment in NEO staff. Um, so that would be something that someone with NEO staff in your SAU would need to update for you to be able to do that uh, to get that access. So just going through that steps with a visual, what it looks like, you're in your dashboard, you select student data, student reports, and then alphabetical order, uh, we have dropout certification report. There's also a dropout details report 
um, as well if you want to get into those. Again, the difference between certification and uh, details. Certification is your aggregate counts, your overall numbers that make up your certificate or make up your dropouts, whereas the details report is going to give you the information about specifics of the students who are included in those counts. So just be aware of that as well. So the certification report here, we have uh, the counts of the overall students by school who are considered dropout. Uh, you can link to your details report here to get into who those two students are from your middle school or two students from your high school, the one from the elementary school. Uh, the reporting year is going to be the previous school year, so 23-24, because that is the federal reporting year. That is the year that we're going you're going to see in the top, so 23-24 in this case for this year. So we'll link into the details report. This report has quite a bit of functionality where you can search for specific students if you know a student is meant to be on here, or if you want to verify that a student is not on here, you can use that search feature. You can save and export, as we always like to say, if you save and export, it will not update the report that you've downloaded when you start doing information updating in Synergy. So if you want to see an updated report, you will have to go through NEO and come to this details report uh, and export a new one or just use the NEO report to see any updates to any of the data. You also have column sorting in case you want to go by grade level or exit description type, uh, whichever you uh, want to organize here. And then the reported grade is the grade where, that the student would be expected to be in this school year. Um, so be aware of that as well. So we can see for this particular student, so I'm just going to go through some of these scenarios because there are some things that um, I want to go through in terms of you know, figuring out if a student really should be on the dropout report, things like that. So for this first student, their last exit code was transferred to a main public school in a different LEA. Uh, so in this case, the student was exited. They were expected to be uh, enrolled by another SAU in another location. Um, in this case, you would want to reach out to the other SAU that was supposed to enroll the student and determine what was going on with that student. You would want to ask questions about, you know, did the student actually come to you? Did they enroll? Um, did, did you enroll them? What's the ID number that you enrolled them with? Um, because if there's a duplicate ID, a lot of times that, that will create, we see a lot of those during dropout season. Um, in that case, if a student does have an exit, a, a duplicate ID number, we will need to contact to metams.support and main.gov, and we can get that reconciled so that they can be off the report. But if you don't contact us, we can't fix it. So um, sometimes this can be just a matter of start date, not lining up with 10-1. This could be, uh, you know, the student actually moved out of state. If the student moved out of state, you would want to update the code. There's a lot of different scenarios that this could kind of play out to be. Um, so just, you know, your students go through the scenarios, talk to people that in your team uh, for data reporting and go from there to figure out, you know, what the situation for this particular student was. Um, so just be aware of that there. This next student is transferred to a charter school. Um, so that is considered a dropout because charter schools are considered public in terms of reporting. So they are required to enroll their students in Synergy. If a student is exited with that um, code and they are not enrolled in Synergy by the charter school, they will be considered a dropout. So if it's a main uh, charter school, you will need to contact the main charter school and ask them, you know, similar to the first scenario here, you know, was the student enrolled under a different ID number? Was did the student not start attending? What was the situation for them? Um, so just kind of be aware of that, uh, that that is a very similar situation to um, how you would handle a transfer to a different LEA. You're not enrolled eligible to return. This student may be one that um, you would maybe moved over the summer. If they moved out of state over the summer, you could exit them with the not enroll or with their um, out of state transfer, uh, maybe out of the country, same idea. Just figure out if that needs to be updated. If they really didn't come back, then they will remain on your report and they will be considered a dropout. Um, so you should do everything you can to figure out where that student is. If the student um, 
for truancy, if you went through the truancy process last year, everything was complete in terms of truancy, then um, you can leave the student not enrolled. Um, and they will be a dropout. Uh, if you have not gone through truancy steps, you will need to enroll them for the year if they are within the truancy um, guide, uh, and you will have to follow through on truancy steps for that student. But otherwise, you can leave them unenrolled if you've gone through those steps already. This next student, again, very similar situation to the first one. Check with the other school district. We're going to go through in the next slide the um, contact search where you can find information about how to contact other SAUs. And then for this last one, this is one of those um, codes that does translate to a dropout. So this is aged out. Um, so this student would be considered a dropout if they truly were exited with aged out and truly did age out of school. So with transfer students, uh, this is where communication across SAUs is very, very important. Uh, so we do have the contact search, and I usually direct people to go to the SAU um, primary contacts, SAU primary contacts by SAU. Uh, as long as people who are doing staff updating are updating staff contact information, this should be up to date. Um, and as long as those district roles are all set, uh, they, this should be ready to roll for you to be able to contact the correct person in the SAU that you're trying to get a hold of. Um, so in terms, if you have a student that transferred out of your SAU and they need to be um, enrolled with another SAU so that not enrolled eligible to return, if they transferred, you can just um, contact the other school and say, hey, can you enroll this student so we can get them transferred? Um, you know, if you exit them with transferred out of your SAU to another SAU, then they would that would be another situation to call and just verify. When you call, uh, the focus of the conversation should be around verifying the state student ID number and uh, verify the start date overlapping 10-1. So those are the criteria for meeting dropout reporting. Um, so if you have it, if they're not enrolled, uh, that ID number, if it's a duplicate, contact the help desk or contact Medem's support and they can help with uh, reconciling that issue. Uh, and if the student was, uh, if the student does still have the same ID number, but their start date is not that 10-1 date, you'll need to figure out who is going to enroll on that 10-1 date. The contact search, uh, for anyone who is not aware, the contact search can be found in a couple different locations. Neo dashboard is one of the places where you can find it. So you log into Neo. You don't even have to log into Neo. Uh, you can just go to dashboard and it will bring up the contact search. It's formerly known as uh, superintendent search, I think. And uh, it will bring you right to this screen that you see here at the top. You can also access this from the schools and SAUs data entry and reporting on the Medem support page. And then you can also access from the data warehouse. So there's a couple of different places where you can find this. And if you have any questions throughout fall reporting for uh, NEO reports, please, for NEO dropout reports, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email, uh, medems.support at maine.gov or 624 6896. Um, we're happy to help. Again, the resource that I put in the chat is available on the student data entry and reporting page. Um, under the reporting instructions. Cindy, I see you have a question. Hi, thank you. I see on my report right now that I have a couple of pre-K students showing, and I think it's because I use the code uh, 03502, not enrolled, eligible to return. So they, they did uh, enroll with us, we uploaded their data, and then the parent decided they were gonna wait a year. Should those be a different exit code so they don't appear on the dropout report? So there. even if you're even if you're exiting your students, let me just verify my page here. Um, I was just I'm noticing. I'm wondering about, about the John, not, not so being compulsory student, school age. Yes. So um, if you use the students uh, the withdrawn from school under the age of compulsory eligible to return. That is still a code that is expected to return the next year. Uh, so it would be considered a dropout. I don't know, Mike, if you have further guidance on the code that should be used for those students. Yeah, I 
I always thought that that code was not a dropout because they are not supposed to be in school. So if you have that, though, Ali, if you found that, we might want to double check with how the report's coded. But I would I would have if you called me on the phone, Cindy, and asked me, I would have said they wouldn't be a dropout. So. So probably yeah. what I should do is change it. I think the secretary coded it um, not enrolled eligible to return. But if I had co coded it withdrawn from school under the age of compulsory attendance, that one is that one considered give a it, dropout too? Give it a try, Cindy. Um, okay. I am seeing it. Uh, I'm seeing it on the list of exit codes expected to return, which does make it a dropout if the student is not enrolled on 10 one. Um, so we just need to verify the logic on the report to see if that's actually true okay. um, and then cross reference with the federal reporting requirements and see if that's also true. So yeah, we'll just have I, to verify that one. OK, yeah, thank as I'm, you. Um, yeah, as I'm rolling it around in my head, I believe the report is coded to look at the student's age as of 10 one. So, for example, if it sees a kid exited, you know, under compulsory age and then when it goes to perhaps put them on the report it checks for 10-1 to see if they are still not of compulsory age and if they're not then it doesn't put them on the report however if you know if they were four or five whatever in june but now as of october when they would be six then it goes okay well there's they are supposed to be in school now that they're of compulsory so i believe there's that logic and i'm and i'm i'm like 99 percent sure that's how we have it so We'll but just we check to be sure, Cindy. Um, Thank you. So you can you can update that code and um, see what happens. Just in the okay. meantime, there won't be any harm in doing that. Okay. And I did check their age, and they're both still four. So it should, if it does have that validation, it should pull them off. Thank you. That's the hope. We're gonna check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great question. Any other questions today? All right, then with that, I think we can wrap up today's session. Um, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to help. Um, October is coming. We're right around the corner, like two weeks away. Um, so uh, we are here for you throughout this uh, reporting period, and we're happy to help. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining us. See you Tuesday or Thursday.